The categories of quantity or extension do not apply to spiritual beings like souls. We cannot speak of souls being parts of other souls. Soul cannot be divided quantitatively, nor can it have heterogeneous parts or limbs like a body. The universal soul remains in its heavenly abode. Our souls, though not cut off from the higher world, have to seek the places assigned to them in this world. The division of souls from each other is an affection of the bodies, not of soul itself. Each individual soul has its own character and uniqueness, which give it its individuality. But in the spiritual world, yonder, there is no obstacle to their complete communion with each other. It is the body and not the soul which makes these illusory divisions. The soul, even its relations with the body, is only in appearance divided. It never loses its vital intercourse with the universal soul. All souls are one. Plotinus is anxious to preserve human individuality. He tells us that each individual must be himself, and that not only the universal soul, but each individual soul is an original cause, not engendered by something else. He says that the soul is entirely its own master, only when out of the body, though then it is in intimate union with the universal soul. Particular souls subsist, as well as the universal soul, independently of bodies. Without the unity of the universal soul absorbing the multiplicity of the particular souls. Or the multiplicity of particular souls splitting up the unity of the universal soul. Particular souls are distinct without being separate. They are united to each other without being confused. And without making the universal soul a simple aggregate. The particular is most itself when it is universal, and yet the differences between souls are real too. It is inner diversity, not space, that makes them many. The consciousness of individual souls does not make up that of the world soul. When we look outward, we forget our unity. When we turn back upon ourselves, we behold ourselves, and the whole as one with God. Soul as we know it is an essentially teleological category. But the home of the soul is the world of purposes achieved, a world from which it again sets forth on its adventures, brave and new.